Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is me doing a bonus question, basically trying to do a prom that I have not done yet. Because, um, you know, the, the daily prompts, I actually you know, have self enough prompts. I don't know if you can see the top. I bring my face. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, I've solved all these prompts. So there are a lot of prompts I, you know, that on the human daily prompts I've already solved. So it would be nice to kind of do a random one. So let's get started. And hopefully they don't give me a premium one. Okay, and they do give me a premium one, so they have not changed the algorithm. But okay, there you go. Uh, very quickly to the new UI, new problem. So let's get started. I uh, hope y'all are having a great day. Um, finally, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, I have some sinus things, which are causing me to sleep not as well. But, you know, hopefully you're doing this problem with me, doing, uh, reading this problem with me. So yeah, let's see. Predict the winner, 486. Uh, maybe it should be 580. No, five, what was it? Five, oh, 538, I guess is what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, you're given an integer array nums. Two players are playing a game. All right, player one and player two. They don't even name them Alice and Bob to, or whatever. Just player one and two. I guess that makes sense. Okay, player one goes first, though, which also makes sense. Both players start the game of zero. So each player, the player takes either the left or the right, and then reduce it by one. The player adds a chosen score. Okay. Return true if player one can use the game. Duh, 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 duh. We assume both. Okay. I mean, this is a very standard E. Well, N is equal to 20 is actually pretty. Um, I was going to say this is standard dynamic programming, but with N is equal to 20, you could probably even do brute force and it'll be okay because that's just two to the 20 possibilities because each player, each turn can either be on the left and the right, and then you just, you know, uh, uh, run order cases. Um, but you can also do d dynamic programming. Uh, which is just based on the delta of the scores. Um, yeah, um, and this is the way that I'm going to do it. And because the, the game is symmetric, you, um, it becomes easier as well. But basically, you're just trying to... It, it's mini-max, right? Uh, you could brute force, but you could also mini-max. Um, this is just game theory stuff, uh, which is you implemented using DP. And the idea here is that Okay, let's say we have a, a, a use turn, right? So re let's say we have a score, we have a left, right, because th that's the, you know, as you remove from the left, you remove from the right, or the suffix, um, this is the thing. Um, and just to clarify, left, left, right, inclusive. And then here, basically, yeah, if left is greater than right, that means that we, we used all the numbers, so we return zero. Otherwise, uh, the current person can just be like, okay, um, you know, the, the score ticking left, say, is equal to the score of left plus one, right? Plus, well, actually, it'll be num sub left minus this, right? Minus because now um, we want, so we want to maximize the score here. And the, um, we want to, and part of that is just two, two parts of the uh, game theory minimax, right? Um, we, we only have control over this part and this part. And to get a maximum score for my current self, we want to maximize this score uh, with its relationship to minimizing the score for your opponent. That's basically the idea here. Um, we can also do that for closing right, which is the minus score left right minus one. And then we just take the max of score ticking left and score ticking right. And that's pretty much it. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about memorization, don't worry. But yeah. But that's basically the idea. Um, I think technically speaking, you don't even need memorization because n is 20. Um, like I said, in this case, it will... St it, this is actually literally brute force if you get the game theory. So I expect this to be right. Um, yeah, well, no. Oh, I've, <laughs> I returned uh, the number. So yeah, so we, we this, if tie is, uh, we, if player one gets the tie, then we, this is just this. I don't know why, I guess it converted the number to true or something. Um, yeah, so that looks good. <laughs> uh, I actually returned the maximum score that the the score uh, player one can make. But yeah, so this is, I actually expect this to be good in the sense that, um, let's, let's try it actually. 
Like I expect this to AC only because N is equal to 20, but they could have a lot of test cases which make this slower. We'll add the DP anyway, regardless, but I, I'm curious whether the, the intended solution is to... Uh... Okay, so I guess it, they, that's really weird that they made it 20 if that's the case because, you know, I mean, I, like I said, we were going to add DP anyway. Um, the, the key idea behind dynamic programming, as I always say, and memorization, is that for every parameters for every input, we get the same output every time. And here, the parameters are going to be from 0 to n. Right is going to be from 0 to n. It's not quite that, per se, because, you know, there is an additional restriction that left is, you know, roughly this, right? So, but we can we can use this to approximate, especially since n is equal to 20. We don't have to worry that much about stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, or uh, has cache, not is cache. So hash cast, we set it to force times n eh, plus one just to be safe. I, I, that's what I always do, even though I, you know, maybe it's not necessary per se. Yeah, so we do that for that. And this is, if you if you watch me enough times, you've seen me done this, a, you know, a billion times now. But I still like to show it. Um, this is basically what I would do. Yeah, and then now we can run it again. I guess we can also uh, copy and paste this to the. How do I? What the? So many things going on. All right, so that you can see that it happened quickly. Um, yeah, and then I just hit the submit button. Yeah, looks pretty good. Um, yeah, only be fifty six percent. Hmm. I guess we just find a memory allocation. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I know that maybe I didn't go that deeply into it, but mini max is a very, very, very uh, specific thing. So I don't know why I want to spend that much time on it. I would not expect it to be on interviews per se, though. Lead code is it, it's, it's a little bit popular on lead code and it's a little bit popular on competitive programming. But yeah, um, the complexity in this case, again, is going to be n square because we have n square possible inputs. Uh, maybe over 2, n square over 2, or something like that, give or take. But obviously, all of n square, and in both time and space, because it's all of 1 after that. Yeah, that's all I have for this one. Uh, I, it's actually, you know, it's been uh, DP week, so uh, I guess in a way, this matches the theme of the week, even though today's was greedy for the daily problem. Anyway, that's all I have. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.